Hi, I'm Damien Muir. I'm the Metering Technical Specialist at Burmad Water Technologies. And I'm here with Rob Cameron from Taz Water. And today we're going to be doing a drive-by route of the iPearl meters. And we're going to be using the Census Collection mobile software. Today we're going to be running uh, the Hawley Beach route with 261 meters. So we just open that up. Here it shows you a list of all the meters, the grey question mark showing that they haven't been read yet. We can bring up the map view and here we will press a little target and that will centre where we are. That's where our car is, a little blue arrow. And then we can see all the metres in the area, zero of 261. We'll go ahead and we'll run the route. So first of all, we've, we've connected our CERT device and that's the uh, radio receiver. Click read all and you can see straight away we're starting to pick up some metres. So we've already picked up eight of 261. And you see there that the green represents that the meter's been read, no alarms. Orange means there is an alarm. And gray is not being read yet. And once you've established a route for any particular area, you wouldn't need to necessarily look at this while you're doing the route. So you could do it with one person in the car just reading the route. They can finish and have a look and make sure they've read all the meters, go back to a particular area if needed. So the IPL uses a one and a half way communication. So what that means is it optimizes the communication for the drive-by. So it does use a one way where the meters are pinging out and that gives you a really great range, 360 degree range of reading the meters. But the one and a half way does mean that you can poll it if you want to get the data logs and information out. So the idea is optimize the way we read them um, and, and uh, conserving the battery life while still having the flexibility of getting more information. The beauty also of the radio communication methodology is that you can read them in any order. So you can see it's picking up meters from adjacent streets. You're not fixed into a particular way that you drive the route. So we read nearly, well just over half of the meters so far. So the meters in this area they're all in pits, aren't they, Rob? They're, yep, they're all in they're all in pits, and uh, as it rains, they can fill up with water. So it's got to be able to see through uh, plastic and metal lids through the water to be able to pick up while we're driving through at 50 k's an hour. So uh, the radio's got to have uh, good range, but it's also got to have good penetration as well. It's really important. The, the beauty of having it on the map is we can see if we've read the meters before we leave that area. So probably the best way to look at that is we can filter by a number of different filters here we can go into status and we say here not read so let's apply that and this way we'll only see the meters that we haven't read yet so 261 meters in this area you know typically this would take hours for a meter reader to manually read and uh, looks like we might pick these up in 10 minutes or so A lot of road works and machinery around this might be the reason why we're not quite picking this meter up yet so we're nearly coming up to the meter we're nearly right at it it's just over there where all these people are working so uh no we're not picking it up no oh, we got it yep so yeah there was a lot of uh road works going on and uh so that one was a little bit difficult but normally it feels unobstructed we can get it from quite a few hundred meters away. Okay, we're done. 261 meters red. We can select that route and then we just do the send. And now that's been wirelessly transmitted back to the uh, back to base. Uh, when we started reading, the administrator can see that it's, it's in progress and you can see when it's been finished. And then he can now export that back into the billing system. So we've finished the route of Hawley Beach and we've noticed there's a number of meters which have leaks. So we've just chosen one to pull out the data logs for further investigation. So we'll just click into this one here and then it will come up and you can see here it's got the data logging parameters for every hour on the hour, which records about 60 days of data. And then we have a fixed date reading and that's good for DMA analysis where all the meters will log on the first day of the month at midnight, but press the little tick button there 
and now it's going out and picking up those data log information. So you can see the progress there. And after it's complete, it comes up with a tick. And I'll just pass it across to Rob to show you how you can uh, then get the information out of that log. Thanks, Damien. So as you see, we've got a log file showing you the usage and date stamps. We have a quick look at the graph. The graph shows you the hourly usage going back the last 60 days. And here we have our alarm showing the leak. We use this data to demonstrate to our customer that the house may have some problem with their plumbing and they may need further investigation. Well, we'll save this and we'll keep it on file for later reference. So today we've been able to demonstrate the drive-by software as well as the data log uh, software and some of the uh, functionalities and uh, benefits of both of them. So I'd just like to say thanks to Rob Cameron for his time and being no able problem. to help demonstrate that and uh, thanks very much for watching.